What's going on, everybody? My name is Nick. Hey, my name is Dave. And this is the deep dive. And it's a little bit different of a deep dive. We keep switching it up on you guys. But uh, Dave's feeling good enough to do, do the podcast, but not quite good enough to do it in person. So uh, we're going old school. We're going Zoom style. Yeah, at, le- at least it's the two of us together. We missed about a month of us being together on it. And uh, last last week we had one in the studio, but uh, this is the best we can do this week, just out of abundance or caution. I do appreciate all the prayers. Uh, I I still currently have COVID. Actually, I'm still testing positive. I feel so much better. Um, but you know, those of you who have it know it. It it kind of it's the gift that keeps on giving. So uh, my goal is to be over this and back preaching this Sunday. That's that's my goal. But um, I have an abundance of of caution. Uh, I'm just working from home and zooming in. We had staff meeting on Zoom this morning, so that's right. That's yeah. right. So, well, why don't we get into it, Dave? And uh, I guess we're switching roles up a little bit since I got to preach this week. We are. You're right. Yeah, this is a little yeah. different. So uh, let's do yeah. it. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right, so Nick, uh, a few things happened since uh, last week. Uh, the Braves lost, and I, I sure am sorry. I'm sorry for myself, but you know, I'm, uh, I'm still mourning a little bit. So this is a little bit of a sensitive subject for me, um, but I'll be, I will be okay. I will make it. Yeah, my question is: Is this the best format? And I know if, like, we were mm. on the people that just, you know, made it into the extra round, but you know, it, it doesn't seem like any of the uh, of the better teams i know houston made it through are, are making it through and so uh this particularly this three out of five format i'm not really sure that you got the four yeah. teams left i think that would be my only complaint actually is that it's a five game series i you know part of me you know not that you want to give the the better teams a disadvantage or anything like that but i kind of like you know from a outside backwards or a a different perspective. I kind of like the idea of, you know, everybody kind of having a chance and, you know, so the top dogs being able to be upset and stuff like that, you know, as much as I hated it for the Braves, it was kind of fun watching the Dodgers lose, you know what I mean? So like, and not because I have anything bad against the Dodgers, but it was just cool to kind of see a team upset them. So I think from a viewer perspective, it it was kind of cool, but um, I think I would like to see it be a seven game series. Yeah, well, you know, that would be a change, right? Yeah. That would be a change. And and so we're talking about that. And what and you preached this uh sermon and uh, Sunday and it was on change. Yeah. Why don't you unpack, you know, uh I, I loved your sermon, listened to it twice. Uh but 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 kind of give us an overview and then let's talk about it some. Yeah, so I used Romans twelve, one and two, um, which is the verse that talks about uh which your mind be transformed or with your transformation be done by a renewing of the mind. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where we started. And we kind of worked on these two words, conform versus transform. And um, with the idea of conforming, you know, we use the, uh, the illustration of kind of trees and leaves and stuff like that through the sermon. So um, the conformist would be kind of the leaf that's kind of falling and going wherever and then it doesn't really know where it's going to land, but it just knows that the wind will impact it. So wherever it ends up, that's where it ends up. And, you know, it's kind of like us when we're talking through um, fads and stuff like that. You know, sometimes growing up, we kind of hit these fads that we weren't really into or not into, but everybody else was. So we kind of jumped into it and uh, we stopped and talked a little bit about um, some childhood fads. You know, I spoke about pogs and how, I was basically given a lethal weapon um, with these slammers. Uh, mm-hmm. Go back and watch the sermon if you want to hear the full story. But uh, Dave, because you weren't there, I'd be interested to hear from you. Is there uh, any bad fads that you can remember from your kind of youth or maybe you're a little older? Um, you know, um, it's interesting. Whoa, what happened here? I lost you. You there? Oh, yeah, I'm still here. I'm good. Okay. All right. I pushed some button on my thing and maybe lose the screen. Uh, you know, I definitely, you know, I, I have a child your age. And so I definitely remember the whole pog trend and yeah, those could be pretty dangerous, uh, stuff. I, I think we had some, some equally kind of dangerous things that like, what were they thinking? And probably, 
uh, the FDA or whoever approves those things has even gotten better because we had, you know, like uh, working, you know, uh, stuff to create, you know, my little fire starter kits, kind of stuff like that. But, but nothing to the it comes to the degree of the of those pogs, you know. That that was something, you know. We had marbles that we played with, and you know, jacks and stuff like that. But anyway, it was a good show. It was it was a good thing about that, and the, and I also do remember the transformers too, you know the. Ooh. Uh, the, you know, we had a, a truck that would turn into, uh, you know, a robot or whatever. And that's kind of, that was a, that yeah, those was, are still yeah. cool. Those, the newer movies they've had of those have been a lot of fun to watch. Well, yeah. we kind of went, we kind of went from this fad to really focusing in on the mind and um, how to be transformed. And we said, well, you got to renew your mind. And for that, you have to understand your mind. And I wanted to read reread a uh, a quote, and I'm going to read. I've got my notes here on the screen over here, so that's why you see me looking this way. But um, I just really like this quote, and I thought it was very interesting. I'd like to get your input, Dave. It's it's from Dallas Willard, who's an American philosopher. Um, oh, love, yeah, man, I, I I love Dallas Willard. I mean, it, it, yeah, he, I've, I've preached a whole sermon series in one of his books before, so yeah, he's one of my favorites. He and that whole. Yeah, he's, uh, Renovari thing that he does with um, a Dow, uh, Dallas Willard. Who's the guy? Richard Foster. The two of those yep. fantastic people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, well, he has this quote and it says this, the spiritual or the process of spiritual formation in Christ is one of progressively replacing destructive images and ideas with images and ideas that build the mind of Jesus himself. Right. Spiritual formation itself moves towards a total interchange of our ideas and images with his. Right. And I just thought that was really cool. Yeah, I do. And I, particularly that's, you know, the renewed thing, I, you know, in the progressive, I, I love what you said about like the trees and the changing of the seasons and, mm -hmm. uh, and then, but the stuff that you did along the human mind too. And like, we know things about like establishing new habits, how long it takes to, to do that. Uh, and since because <laughs> I might be coughing throughout this, but uh, since, you know, I'm doing this thing on emotions and not to like hijack what I'm doing, but I think there is an overlap here is that like in a baby is a baby is like learning and his brain is developed. Like everything is like, it's either one or two things, right? It's either, either like anger, you know, because they're not, they're hungry or angry because they're wet or angry because of something else. But then as the mind develops, you become develop a more nuanced thing about that. And I think in our, our Christian life, it's the same way with those developments of, of, of capturing every thought for Christ or having, having the mind of Christ become, you know, uh, where our, it's sort of our default. So I like that. Yeah, quite. Paul. Paul was pretty vigilant about talking about our brain and kind of having control over it because he knew that's where that's where a lot of it started. And if we could really train our mind to be uh, more like Christ, mm -hmm. then we're going to end up where we want to be. That's where the transformation kind of begins. That's the maybe the kindling to the fire or whatever. But you, you got to start with that. Mm -hmm. And as you were saying, kind of me talking about the you know there's a scientist Donald Hebbs. He he kind of talked about this idea. Um, and basically, in short, just to make it real quick and easy, he argued that, um, you know, our, our mind is made up of several uh, neurons, lots and lots of neurons that are firing every time we do anything. Um, but after we do things more often, neurons that are firing together and going off at the same time, they actually wire together to create these uh, mental paths in our brain, essentially. So... Um, you know, I related it to like riding a bike, that phrase, you know, it's like riding a bike where you can kind of quickly recall something because you've done so much practice and put so much time into learning it. Uh, you know, what if being like, what if being Christ like for us became, um, kind of like riding a bike? What would you say about that? Yeah, I, I, I like, I mean, I, I think it's a, a beautiful example. I don't know that I can do any better than that. Um, I do think of some words that are churchy words that we use, like um, uh, formation and confirmation, you know, that as we are forming our lives in Christ, it may be putting some of those practices that we're in, like whether it's the mechanics of riding a bike or whatever it is, or let's say like in, in baseball, you know, you are are practicing um, 
you know, ground balls and somebody hits you a hundred ground balls so that it becomes very natural. So under in a game circumstance, you're able to field and throw the ball. And so that's sort of the formation and the confirmation of that would be, you know, that in, under a game circumstance. So we're doing things like you talked about, you know, Bible study and prayer and scripture memorization and those kind of things. Those are sort of like the fundamentals that we build on. And, uh, and, and, and sometimes we do those uh, not under game circumstances so that when life hits us, we're able to, to utilize those things. And, you know, you're able to, you know, turn the double play if needed, you know, wh whatever's life's kind of hitting at us, we're able to do. I hope that makes sense, but yeah. Yeah, no, I actually, you know, I can resonate really well with that illustration because of my time in baseball, but also, as a Braves fan, um, you know, one of the things you see all of our infielders do is Ron Washington's our third base coach, and he's often known as like the infield guru, and he has them out there. You know, I mean, before the game, they're they're doing ground balls, they're practicing scooping, and I mean, they're just hitting over and over and over again. And, and these are guys that are getting paid millions and millions of dollars who are professional already at this, and they're still uh, diving into the fundamentals of it. You know what I mean? Because they know how important – keeping that fresh is and I, and I think it's the same even on our christian walk is that like uh, and i like how you said fundamentals because as long as we keep going back to this our our base is always going to be strong you know what i mean like we're not going to have to re-review or anything like that because it's just going to be kind of a part of what we're already doing it comes to natural you know and, and not like to push the sports uh narrative too much because i was trying to think of a bachelorette thing <laughs> going back to last week's discussion maybe we use too many sports examples but it is like one of the things that will drive me crazy is when i see and you see it we see it in pros in college but when i see somebody like that is just pure fundamentals what are you thinking you know, like, you know, you'll see it like, uh, you know, the Georgia uh, uh, punt receiver has has goofed up several things that are just you practice that to its natural thing, things, you know, and as fundamentals. And I, and I know it's different under the game circumstances, uh, but going back, because I know you've taught confirmation with youth and all. But I, 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 you know, I had to I was a youth director when I went to seminary and I was um, we were studying uh, sort of the theology of uh of dietrich bon bonhoeffer and i, I never will forget the um the professor says so there's so, sort of four understandings of it there is um but the first of it is christ is center you know uh christ is center oh no I, the fir first one is really the holy otherness understanding that you know there is a god and we are not but then it's putting right. christ to center and then formation and then confirmation and so, you know, we like sometimes we, you know, when you're kids, you have those like scripture memory drills and, you know, all this kind of stuff we do stuff to do. And it's just building in, you know, the fundamentals of, of life. And we should be doing this our entire life. Right. You know, absolutely. So, yeah, I, I think that's, you know, I, I went to some just some practical things, as you were saying, and. and I landed on scripture memorization as one of them. Just, and I kind of gave a story of um, back in my youth ministry days, but even in my own personal days of how um, scriptures like Romans eight thirty one or John sixteen thirty three for me, uh, they just consistently pop up, and I don't have to pull out my Bible and go look them up. You know, they're just already written there, um, and that's actually been so beneficial for me because it's just giving me back that like focus in on who God was in the midst of a, pr a pretty chaotic situation. You know, I, I talked about, you know, when my parents got a divorce, when I had a family member who almost drank themselves to death, you know, when, when I was lonely uh, by myself, you know, like those types of things where, um, you know, definitely moments where it kind of feel like the world was kind of closing in on me. It just gave a little bit of God's light to shine through for me, which gave me the hope and energy to keep going. And I think it gives those those skills that the Holy Spirit can can draw upon because it's already there. It's not like yeah, it, it, it's it's already there. And then it's I think the Holy Spirit does speak into those circumstances and sometimes introduce new things to us. But is it's really working with seeds that were already planted in there? You know. Yeah. You do, might, you, do you have a do you have a favorite scripture that kind of pops up in a lot of your situations? 
I, you know, I, the who shall uh, separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress, you know, or, you know, nothing shall separate us. That that's definitely another, a great Romans. I like a lot of Philippians uh, because it is, um, it, 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 Paul is just, you know, Paul's writing from prison and he's just so positive through that. And so in trying to keep more of a positive main uh, uh, mindset, I, I often go back to that, but those, those are some that I think of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next one, I, oh. Christ is for me. Who shall be against me? I love that. That's mm, yep. Yeah. That's my, that's my life, life verse. It just pops up all the time when I need it. Uh, it just, uh, the next one, um, I said was actually just reading the Bible and, and being dedicated to kind of reading, uh, maybe bigger sloth at a time or whatever, like, um, just getting in that habit. What I have a question for you kind of outside of this is like, why do you think it's important to read the Bible over and over again? You know, I think some people think, Oh, I've read it through once or whatever, but, uh, why keep reading it if you've already done it? Man, I, you know, I, well, first of all, I think the Bible was alive and, and and we believe that it con contains the truth of, of our salvation, and and so in that we're God speaking to us through His Word. But I think it goes back to the same thing about like you were talking about the coach said, but continue to practice the fundamentals and staying mm -hmm. close. You're learning more and more and becoming a lifelong learner. Like right now, I I, I did some work over. Um, the my vacation uh in leviticus because i i I've, i want to practice uh preach a sermon series on leviticus because it's such a weird book you know and okay. it's people when they're writing but i i think i mean it's in there for a reason and yeah. so uh, i i think wherever we are in our life we can learn something something new we may read something at a more of a childish level as we go through it the first couple of times but then, you know, it's sort of the renewing of that and it's in this, in the reminding of it. We can't hold all of that in or we maybe God is going to speak to us in a fresh way. And I just think it's one of those ways. God speaks to us in many ways. I just think it's one of the ways that God is speaking to us consistently. So being in the word consistently is, you know, and not for studying to preach a sermon series on Leviticus, but but studying to hear from what God's going to speak to me as an individual with any certain, you know, day or week. Yeah. That, that really hits home for me because I think a lot of, uh, especially when I was a younger uh, youth minister, a lot of my scripture started becoming for, um, or my scripture reading started becoming for sermon preps or whatever, it's you know, it wasn't, preachers yeah i mean yeah yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't for just myself and learning but mm -hmm. yeah I, I agree with you i think it's a it's a fundamental thing but also as i was thinking about it even afterwards was you know i think because we're in different times of life often when we re read certain things you know i know some people I, i've heard people like refer to be like did god just write this in here because i've never seen this before you know and i think sometimes it's our perspective like as we grow and, and as as we have different life experiences, our perspective on things start changing. So that as we read the Bible, like our different things are popping out at us. Like, oh, I've never even thought about that, thought about it that way before. I've never seen it that way before. Or, oh, look, there's like whole new words in here that I just skimmed over last time I read this. You know, so I think that's why we continuously do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it is. I mean, and you know, we certainly see that in Christ and we see that in the other examples of scriptures, even in the new Testament. Um, so, uh, and they were reading the old Testament at the time, you know? So, yeah, uh, at least we have the new one. Yeah. Well, when we got the old, one, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. We got the old one. Too. We, got the old one too. we do have the old one too. There you go. Yeah. Um, the next thing I kind of went into was, um, you know, one of the practical ways we can uh, renew our minds is, is learning from good Christian teachers. And I gave you a little bit of a shout out. So yeah, you just, did. yeah, you did. Thank uh, you. And I was humbled. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's true. I, I think it's true. Again, it wasn't for any, um, you know, type of brown, brown nosing or <laughs> brownie points or anything like that. It, it was, it's just truth. And, and I think 
I think it's beneficial to learn from a variety of voices. Um, I, you know, I said up there on Sunday that, you know, I think going outside of your own ethnicity, going, uh, finding pastors from different places who are living different lives and stuff like that, or, or living in different cultures, I, I think is very valuable because it, uh, my point was that it would give you kind of a better overall look at who God was and help you understand God from a different uh, side. Right. And and then I just named a few of the teachers uh, that I really liked. You know, I really like Francis Chan, um, Bianca Oltoff, John Mark Comer. You know, these are just, these are people that I've been studying from recently or listening to uh, on the side as well. You know, I, I like to listen to podcasts as I'm driving into work or, uh, sometimes even around the shower or whatever, just just to kind of help me think. You know, sometimes it's part of my quiet time is to just hear from somebody else teaching and stuff like that. And uh, I would recommend those. Do you have Do you have any teachers that you're kind of regularly listening to right now? Yeah, I mean, they're people that I that I really admire and listen to from time to time. I, I, the podcast that I listen to, I've mentioned on a real regular basis. I've mentioned in here before is called the Bible for Normal People, uh, and it's a guy named Pete Ains and. Uh, that does that. And, uh, I, I really like that. And, and he'll bring in, you know, different authors and speakers and interview them each week. Um, uh, and so I, I, I do listen to that on a consistent basis. Um, you know, I like Andy Stanley uh, quite a bit. I think he's one of the best preachers that we've got going right now. Cause he's very practical. He's very airy man. I wouldn't say he's, you know, a big scholastic kind of guy, but uh, I just think he has a delivers a very practical, uh, you know, feet feet on the ground sort of level. Uh, Brian McLaren, uh, Adam Hamilton, who's uh, uh, Church of the Resurrection. I know you know about him. Um, I like him quite a bit. Uh, so there's 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 a bunch of, of good ones out there uh, uh, to listen to. A lot of good podcasts, and um, you know, it, it it's you know, I think it's good to yeah. hear different perspectives too. And I need to, I need to explore some more when you were talking about different ethnicities and, um, and different, you know, um, even genders. I just realized that most of the people I just listed are white men. Uh, but yeah. I, there's some, I, I think that's good to get different perspectives of, of, of God's word from, from different places. Yeah. yeah I, I think, I, you know, good teachers are good teachers, no matter what ethnicity, no matter what, but like, you know, just, just kind of taking that step out a little bit to kind of say, like, you know, what is somebody who's maybe, you know, even an inner city pastor versus a country pastor or, you know, like, I think they just all have different experiences and different ways that they could see God at some level, um, you know, or Hispanic versus American or, or whatever. But the last place um, I kind of took my sermon was really talking about this idea of community mm -hmm. and how when we can transform ourselves uh, we can help transform our community and but also finding good community or mentors and stuff to be around is important mm -hmm. so I, I i wanted to in there just because i felt like um it, it's it's very very important to live life with people who are walking the way and and i don't mean that in a way where um i read a, a study one time and the guy referred to it as christian cocooning uh, where we just surround ourselves with only Christians and people who think like us, but more in a way of like always having a, a support system that you can lean back on, somebody who's there to help uh, keep you focused on what you're really about, but also uh, what you're trying to become. You know, uh, you could use the illustration like going to the gym, you know, to make going to the gym a, a, a practice or something you really want to do. They say you're like three times more likely to continue going if you have somebody with you, uh, mm -hmm. somebody that's also pushing you, somebody that's also uh, committing to do the same thing you are. So yeah, I, seven I think, a.m. comes and, and you go like, I got to meet somebody if it was just me, sleep in. But, you know, I, yeah, I've been there before. I need to do it again. But uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think Christian community is important. And I used I, I went back to the tree illustration and talked about. Uh, how trees, when they are growing deep and strong, uh, they'll put huge root systems in the grounds to help kind of nourish them and stuff like that. And um, and I got reminded on Sunday that not all trees do that, but um, certain types of trees will do that. You know, it's kind of a generic type of tree, but 
um, I forgot the exact term, but I was just reminded that on Sunday. But the, the, the nurse logs, they what they call them when <laughs> trees in their death are giving out life because they're putting yeah. nutrients in the ground that are, you know, that are new, there for feeding the, the new generation. And it's not just the trees, it, you know, it's also all of life. It's the, you know, the, the, the fish and, you know, the, all the stuff. So, yeah, I love that illustration. I yeah. Know, so right there with you with it. Yeah. I just, I just want to make sure, like, I, I wanted to make sure that everybody recognized that they are a part and, and that I, I didn't care if they were old or if they were, uh, young or, or whatever that they would they would see that there's still value to them outside of just an attendance or just uh just a check or or whatever like that they have something that they can they can physically reach back to the generation behind them or or reach up and, and set up and help the the generation ahead because as I said in, during the sermon is that you know as as trees are preparing for the next season of life we also need to be preparing for the next season of life. And that's, that's kind of part of that renewing process is that we're an ongoing consistent renewal is that we're, we're setting up for what's coming next. You know, life in 10 years from now is going to be different than life is now. And how are we preparing for it? How are we putting stuff away for it? How are we um, bringing somebody along with us? Yeah. And I, and I think you're, you know, to continue to push that metaphor, you know, a tree, you know, a single tree out in the middle of a field somewhere by itself is not going to, is going to have a, a harder time surviving than a tree that's part of a forest or part of others, some other ecosystem. And as Christian Christians, I think, you know, the way it's designed, there's individual responsibility, but it's not done individually. It's done in community. And so we need one another, you know, I, this is my fourth zoom thing I've done today. And then I'm going to take a nap after this, <laughs> but you know, it started though. And while this day is going pretty well, as it started with a group of, of folks that I meet with kind of an accountability clergy thing, uh, weekly, you know, I did that before the first, the two staff meetings we had this morning. So I I'm a big, big believer in you. We need to be a part of some smaller group that's feeding us. Uh, and then we also need to be giving back in some other way, you know, and looking for those, you know, who is, who are you, is mentoring you and who are you mentoring kind of, kind of thing. Uh, because it, 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 I think that's just the way it's designed to work. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Well, that I mean, that that's kind of where we ended up with the sermon and, and we are kind of getting close to our normal time here, Dave. So um, I don't know, do you, uh, we're, we are anticipating you're back for Sunday, and um, yeah, do you kind of have maybe a preview of what's going on? Well, uh, I gave it last week. Um, I, you know, I started this sermon series on emotions, and so we're going to move into the uh, the second part of it. There's, there's three parts of it, and uh, excuse me. So we're um, got a fifth Sunday this uh, week. So I was going to finish those up in the three weeks before the fifth Sunday. Now we're just kind of pushing it out so that I'll do part two next week and part three. So this week we'll be looking uh, at one of those raw emotions that we have is anger. It's a, it, you know, it's a secondary emotion, but yet it's kind of a primary emotion. And we talked about last week, there is good anger. I think there is a part where righteous anger, where if it moves into rage out of control, self-centered kind of anger it's bad so we're going to be looking at that whole arena and as we continue emotions and then uh and just a preview of the third week we'll be looking at uh you know how do we keep our emotions together and i think it's it comes it stems from a heart of gratitude a heart grounded in, in gratitude and understanding and appreciation uh and thankfulness for life and so we'll do that on the fifth sunday and uh I know that you are going to get to go see your mom here in a couple of days for a couple of days. So uh, send yep. her our, our wishes and blessings and prayers. And um, I'm glad she's doing so well. Uh, give us up to date on that. Yeah. So um, my mom, you know, the doctors are kind of saying that she's basically kind of been the poster child for a lung transplant. She, uh, everything went very well for her. Um, they found a set of meds that worked really quickly for her and, um, you know, her, 
she she's actually already out of the hospital she's out of rehab and now she's she's still living in nashville uh, for the next couple months and um she'll be kind of doing testing for just to make sure that the lungs doing what the lung needs to do and getting it cleaned out and stuff like that so um you know just just kind of the regular maintenance stuff that's pre prepping her for uh, how she's going to be living her life for the rest of her life but um yeah so far everything's gone really well and again just thank you for your prayers and um you know i i definitely think uh they've done some help some good there so i'm very appreciative of all that and all of you who have reached out about that as well all right okay well we're, we're prayers will be with you for travel and for uh being with your mom as she continues in recovery and so uh anything else for the good of the order no, I think that's it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and being a part of this. And um, like guys, like we said earlier, if you didn't catch the sermon, you can go check it out. It's on the Facebook and on the YouTube. And um, if you have any comments, uh, drop them below or send us the email. But um, you know, this was kind of like riding a bike, jumping jumping back on Zoom and doing this. This we we did this pretty well, I think. We didn't jump into each other too hard and. Uh, it wasn't so bad. It works. Yeah, this format works. Uh, it's it's nice for being face to face, but uh, uh, absolutely with two people is not too hard. But anyway, uh, uh, God bless everybody. Uh, I my plan is, uh, you know, I don't know what time. I'm getting a little bit better every day, and so uh, my plan is to be back on Sunday and preaching on Sunday, even if I'm wearing a mask up until the time I preach. Uh, but hopefully, you know, one of these mornings I'm gonna. Uh, test uh, negative, but I'm, I am still testing positive. I uh, didn't take a test today, take it and take another one tomorrow. And uh, I'm hoping to be done with this, but it's been rough. Yeah. So, all right. God bless. Bye-bye. Take care guys.